Hey guys, welcome back. <clears throat> it's been a minute here. Kind of was uh, at a stalemate. Needed to retool. And uh, we did. So we're picking it back up. Um, it's kind of stuck because I had previously cut this piece of the intermediate frame and uh, I couldn't probably fit this. So. Now that we have a welder, one of the tools I needed, uh, we can start doing a small tack job and welds to uh, move the project along. So a few things we want to hit today is uh, how do you get this shell fitted to the SLK? And do you want to go full time? Uh, you want do you want it to be uh, fused at all times, or do you want the shell to be removable? So you need to make a decision here. I'm still shooting for a removable shell, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull that off yet, but we'll see. Um, I need to find the center of the car and square up the frame, the other intermediate frame. So uh, found a few spots that will work. One is the uh, center nut plate hole for this uh, cover. Use that as a pickup point. And then there's a point right there and a point right here. So we use those two points. And then of course you got the center point here that we got a 10 millimeter bolt. So, I use these anchor bolts. It kind of worked out for me. So let me show you what, I, what they are. They're um, Home Depot anchor bolts. What's neat about them, most anchor bolts, they have a tapered end. So as they were self-centering to the holes as I tighten them up. So I'm like, okay, let's use those. top and you get the point so that was a nice little find now we can square up the intermediate frame next I want to talk about the welder you must have a welder to get this job done if you're planning to do it yourself so you have to invest in the welder. it doesn't have to be an expensive welder because most of your welds are gonna be Structural, you just need to fuse them. You don't have to lay dimes, as they say. So you just need to make sure that they hold. You're not gonna see any of them. And another tool that I bought is a power probe. These are expensive and then found one on Amazon for $24.99. This thing is awesome. So I think it's gonna be worth every penny for troubleshooting. Because you can check for 12, you know, voltage. You can check for ground. You can send the voltage and send the ground. So if you haven't seen one or haven't never had one, I highly recommend it. I found this one on Amazon. So I'm excited to use it. So next, we're going to touch on just some pneumatic tools that we picked up. That I picked up. I got my grinder die grinder with scotch brad pads this will come in handy for um, sanding and grinding in uh, tight corners just the belts I've used these before uh, if you want a saza pneumatic saza and for heavy nuts and bolts another thing I picked up is some number three, uh, some three pin connectors, some six pin connectors, and eight pin connectors. So, since I'm planning to making this a removable shell, I want to be able to disconnect the tail light housings. So, one side's going to get eight, and the other side's going to get 
six because this side has seven wires one of the sides has a seven wires and one of the wires is extra for the fog lights and the six wire will work for the other one and then the three the three pin connectors will be for the front for the turn signals and the parking lights and the headlight assemblies already come with a quick disconnect so there it is here's your three pin for that guy so and if you just want to remove the housing you could just remove the housing assembly sample paint for silver lemon green I think the rain's gonna be a fail. So what else can we talk about? Yeah, I'm excited to pick back up. Obviously, just to recap, the battery will be, need to be re relocated. Otherwise, you're gonna have another welder there. So I'm thinking possibly put it down here or maybe underneath the fuel tank and then maybe get another fuel to small 10 gallon fuel tank something small because it's not a computer car so you're not going to use it that much so you don't need that much gas i think 10 gallons will be plenty to be able to save space and remove that monstrosity from inside um my fuel cap is going to be i'm guessing somewhere right here on the hip and then soon we start working on the structure to make the chassis to the intermediate frame looking forward to that and then was struggling with the air conditioning and i thought i cut one too many wires as well so that was mystery was solved this plug right here that controls the air conditioning was not seated properly and I don't know why I missed it. it took me a few times to figure it out Uh, the support right here and I really don't want to and I know might have to raise the radio support up and the only way to do that is with maybe some aftermarket uh, smaller radiators and possibly some slim lines right here we have about four and a half inches from here to here and then you have another about two inch clearance right here maybe three before you hit the pulleys so if i can get a radio mounted here and scoot the air conditioning uh two four inches back and tuck the supercharger heat exchanger up in the corner up here i might be able to salvage this structure and then maybe just move that support up and hide it so it's not visible from the outside. <sighs> Haven't decided what to do yet, but first was we need to get the welder so we can start finding square and square up the intermediate subframe, immediate frame. So that's been uh, established on the front 
so it will carry to the back the back should be easy to find so we're using these pickup up points right here nothing fancy just that yeah so now it's pretty square next we're going to fit the body back on the shell back on and uh see if it needs to move forward or back and uh, wheel arches will be controlling on that uh geometry also uh the front grill so stay tuned if you have any questions please ask if you have any answers please share if you have a better mousetrap i want to hear about it yeah, and we have the low profile uh, brake reservoir from the Audi.